Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the evening of the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. And for those whose sins you retain, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. So, my dear brothers and sisters, this is the Solemnity Feast of Pentecost Sunday, which is absolutely fantastic and I think just so needed in the church today. I think it's absolutely amazing how much grace is available to us and at the same time how needed that grace is. Um, I think if you, if you look at the news, if you look at what's going on generally in social media, I think there's been a general kind of a, a dropping of the standard, a kind of a dropping of the, the joy, a dropping of the presence of God in the world which we, we kind of get used to, you know, we kind of get used to until maybe we see something else or we go to another country and realize, wow, it, things are different, things can be different. Do you know, they say that uh, if you leave a frog in water, right, and put the frog uh, over the oven and let the water boil slowly, he won't be able to decide when it's too hot to jump out and he'll actually boil to death, right, because it's a little warmer, yeah, I can handle this, it's a little warmer, it's getting a bit uncomfortable, it's a bit warmer again, yeah, maybe, I don't know, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is quite hot, actually. Yeah, yeah. And then he's dead. Whereas, if you put a frog into boiling water, he'll jump out immediately. So this is kind of what's happened to us, I think, in society here. Uh, that in general, things have just been dropping and dropping. God is is, is more. I don't don't say God is absent, but God is pushed out more. So much so that we don't actually recognise the fact that God isn't in our lives, isn't in our politics, isn't in our media. It's just normal. Uh, this this was, was, was very much highlighted to me at uh, the time when, when Jason Everett was supposed to come here and, uh, and speak in, in a couple of venues around the country here. And, uh, you know, he's a wonderful, wonderful speaker, very, very Catholic, very pastoral, uh, very sensitive to, to, to the needs of, of, of people and young people in general. But it's just, they painted him as the greatest uh, bigot and criminal in the face of the planet. Anyway, um, and then I was just watching a commentary afterwards, and one of the commentators said, yeah, well, you, of course, we know that uh, Ireland's media is very left-wing. And it just struck me. It actually is. And while we might say, I mean, uh, that might sound a bit harsh or something, where could a priest go to get an interview where we know that what we actually say is going to get reported? What I actually say will get reported fairly. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be interviewed by anyone, because, no, not because I'm afraid of an interview, but because I, I, I would find it very unlikely that what I say will be reported. So I don't trust them, because they don't, they, they don't, they don't represent who represents the conservative view, the Irish Catholic, and that's about it. You know, so, like, but it's, it, this, this happens slowly, 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 so that now a Catholic can't get fair representation in the public sphere, but we've just, it's just, as I say, we've just gone that direction very slowly, so much so that we, we've hardly even noticed. Same with Catholic education in the country. Once very solidly Catholic, now uh, the practice rate for those straight after confirmation, dare I say even before confirmation, is through the floor. And people finish 13 years of Catholic education not knowing the very basics, but even more than that or worse than that, whatever about the information, the catechesis involved, they don't know the Lord. They don't have a relationship. So 13 years of Catholic education and they don't know Jesus. But we've, we've hardly noticed. There's just been a general kind of slowly, 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 so much so that our Catholic education barely re- re- resembles a Catholic education at all. So, so things, things are in great need of renewal. 
And I think in all this as well, dare I say, and I'm going to throw this one out because this one's good, uh, slightly politically incorrect, but sure. <laughs> when has that ever stopped me? Um, so, but no, I was talking to a friend of mine who was doing an interview with uh, a priest for, for, for a website. So he was, do, he was doing this interview, okay? And he's a, a strong, athletic chap, and he was walking across the yard, and he just felt this push behind him, and he falls and he trips, and he sprains his foot. Now, it was, uh, it was uncomfortable, to say the least, during the interview, because like, you've got this foot which is just thumping, thumping, thumping every heartbeat. Foot's thumping like crazy. And uh, so he does the interview, interview goes well, and uh, gives the... Uh, the, the footage, the recordings into their digital audiovisual guy to get it all edited and, uh, and, and cleaned up. So he calls the guy <coughs> a couple of days later to see how the interview is, how it's, how it's progressing, how the, uh, the editing is going. And he said, it's good, yeah, it's good. Um, he said, there's a, there's a problem though, like, I mean, you know, the three of you talking, there's, there's one and he's just making an awful lot of noise in the background. And the guy goes, the three of us? There was two of us. And he said, no, 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 no. There's very clearly a third voice growling or grunting or making a background dis distorting noise during the interview. Now, this, 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 this happened 10 days ago, maybe less, right? And uh, as I say, like, the guy who was editing had no idea what had happened or what the, you know, has no real affiliation with the church. But there is another side Right? There's another spirit out there. And I think uh, another thing that has kind of happened slowly, slowly uh, in our culture is that <clears throat> we've substituted Catholicism for spirituality. But spirituality, even the word itself, spirit, which there's all sorts of spirits. There's good spirits and there's bad spirits. Just because you have a spirituality doesn't make it good. Or the same, same, even the same with religion. You know, we have our religion. Oh, that's grand. I worship trees. That's really sad. <laughs> like, trees aren't God. So, like, what's a tree going to do for you? I mean, it looks nice, but I mean, it's not God. Like, it's not going to give you eternal life. It doesn't give you grace. I mean, so, so the word spirituality, and we'd be really, really aware of this, is completely rubbish. Like, I mean, if, if a person substitutes Christianity, Catholicism, Jesus Christ for some random kind of homemade spirituality, because not all spirits are good. So today we're talking about the Holy Spirit, but there's also fallen angels, evil spirits, who also have an angelic mind, who are also spirits, but not good. Do not want you to get to heaven. Do not want your happiness. Do not want your kids to be happy. Right? So like, we have to be really careful here. So when we're talking about the Holy Spirit, like the Holy Spirit uh, is what? It, just to, to explain <clears throat> really briefly, uh, and maybe, maybe a little excessively simply, what the Holy Spirit is. But the Holy Spirit is the love of God personified. So, a love that's so intense between God the Father and God the Son. God the Son and God the Father. There's this reciprocal love between them. And that love is so intense, so real, so divine, so pure and so perfect, that the Holy Spirit proceeds from their love. So he is love personified. Now, if anybody is recognizing the dynamic here, the love between uh, two people, the divine persons in their case, that brings forth life, you have the family. So the family is, is the, uh, 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 a terrestrial or a human spark of this divine reality of the Trinity. So the Holy Spirit then is love personified, love that becomes a person, a divine person. So when we talk about then life in the spirit, it's, it, what, what, what is it? It's life immersed in this divine love. That's what it is. So it's not, and this isn't to offend anyone now, but it, it's not property of, of the charismatic movement. You know, and I, I presume they would say the same thing. Like, it's, it's not necessarily hands in the air and hallelujah, as great and all as that may be. That's not what, what life the Spirit means. It's not what I have the Holy Spirit, therefore I'm charismatic. It, that's not really the way it works. It's uh, I have the Holy Spirit, therefore I live a life of love. So you can be contemplative, right? A contemplative enclosed sister absolutely hopping with the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? It, it's, it's not, a pile, it, it can have exterior manifestations. That's great, wonderful. 
But that's not, it, it, that's not the only way the Holy Spirit manifests itself. In fact, uh, Father Paul, the founder of my own community, he would always say the most charismatic person ever was Our Lady, right? Filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit. And Louis Marie de Montfort has this uh, beautiful quotation, uh, which I'll, I'll, I'll read to you now, uh, which I think uh, underlines this link between Our Lady and the, and the Holy Spirit. He says, when the Holy Spirit finds Mary in a soul, he hastens there and enters fully into it. He gives himself generously to that soul, to that soul who's dedicated to Our Lady, right? Or consecrated to Our Lady. He gives himself generously to that soul according to the place it has given to his spouse. Okay? So the Holy Spirit will come into the soul proportionately to how Marian that soul is, how great the soul's love for Our Lady is. Interesting that the more Marian the soul is, the, more our, the greater our devotion to Our Lady, the more the Holy Spirit wants to come in to our souls when he finds his, his spouse there, right? One of the main reasons why the Holy Spirit does not work striking wonders in souls is that he fails to find in them a sufficiently close union with his faithful and inseparable spouse. <coughs> it's, a, it's a beautiful idea, you know, it's a beautiful reality uh, from True Devotion to the Blessed Virgin by Louis Marie de Montfort. So uh, I think it's just uh, 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 an important thing to keep in mind. That the, like the, so firstly, the Holy Spirit is necessary because the world is slipping away from God. The Holy Spirit is necessary because we have to focus on spirits that are holy, not just spirits in general, because there are not good spirits. There are two points so far, okay? I'm, I'm speaking kind of quickly. I don't want to spend too long at this today. So, one, uh, what was the first point again? Um, what was the first point? Were you listening? Yeah, slipping away from God, so we need the Holy Spirit. Secondly, focus on the Holy Spirit because, we don't, because there are evil spirits out there as well. So, focus on the Holy Spirit. Thirdly, in order to access the Holy Spirit, in order to have the Holy Spirit alive and active in our lives, dedicate yourself, consecrate yourself to Our Lady. All right? And in that way, then, we can really experience a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit within our hearts. Um, <clears throat> not only do we need the Holy Spirit as, as individuals, but as a society, as a church, we need to be living, inspired, guided by, and dare I say, consoled by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so there's a, there's a, a macro, a, 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 a micro level, so just me, and then there's a macro level of the church or society, the, the world as a whole. We all need the Holy Spirit. In this book, uh, in Sinu Yezu, uh, many of you here in Ireland anyway might be familiar with it or might have seen it around, um, it's the Lord speaking to a Benedictine monk, speaking to his heart mainly about priesthood and the renewal of the priesthood. But I think what's said here is relevant to all of us. Uh, on page nine, if you, ever, if you come across it or if you have it at home, you can read it afterwards. Uh, so the author writes, Today, during the glorious mysteries of the rosary, the Lord spoke to me of a sacerdotal Pentecost. So uh, sacerdos is the... Latin word for a priest, so a priestly Pentecost. Of a grace obtained by the intercession of the Virgin Mary for all priests of the church. To all priests will be offered the grace of a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit to purify the priesthood from the impurities that have disfigured it and to restore to the priesthood a brightness of holiness such as the church has never had since the time of the apostles. Quick recap and paraphrasing. A fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit, making the priests that you know at home like the apostles of the first century. They died martyrs, the vast majority. They were absolutely selfless, absolutely tireless, and died, in, for many of them, in horrific ways, out of love for the Lord. Right? This is the kind of Pentecost that's, that, that, that he's speaking about here. This priestly Pentecost is being prepared already in silence and in the adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. So for all of you out there who are in adoration groups, uh, organizing adoration in, in parishes, these days now maybe counting down the days or trying to contact your parish priest to get the adoration chapel opened and all this kind of, uh, it's, it's difficult at the moment. But 
we're not talking about just the last couple of months, for the last couple of years that you've been doing, or decades that you've been doing Eucharistic adoration, this Pentecost is being prepared. The priests who love Mary and who are faithful in praying her rosary will be the first ones to benefit from it. Their priesthood will be wonderfully renewed and they will be given an abundance of charisms to vanquish evil and to heal those under the sway of the evil one. Uh, Our Lady as well explains to Ida Pierdeman uh, in the apparitions of, of Our Lady of All Nations, she speaks about this new final Marian dogma after which there will be a new Pentecost, a new Pentecost for the whole church. Like this is just incredible, mind-blowing stuff. And yet at the same time, just we hinted at, at, at the context uh, of Ireland at, at the beginning of the homily, but I think we can also make that more global. We can see more and more in social media, the world has become quite small. God isn't welcome. He's not wanted. And uh, whenever any political leader comes out in favor of religious freedom, comes out in favor of God, it's, it's slated on social media. So we can see there's a, such a need for the Holy Spirit, such a need that we can't actually fix it ourselves. We can't provide for it ourselves. We can't heal ourselves. I think we've gone so far that only an intervention of God can, can heal the church and bring her back to what she should be. And this is where I've, I've great hope. I've absolutely fantastic hope. And even uh, yesterday and today now, there's a, an event going on down in Cork called Ignite 2020, where they've invited a number of speakers from throughout the world and throughout Ireland to, to speak about renewing the faith, growing in the faith, igniting that fire. And it's something we're all part of. And you can see the people who are speaking and the people they have worked with, the truth of the faith works. That Jesus Christ is enough. That what our, our church teaches heals the wounds of so many hearts. That Jesus Christ is enough, like God suffices. So we lack nothing once we have the Lord, if we could just believe that and put that into practice. And I think the time will come when that will be the case. The Lord will make it so. So all of your prayers at home, all of the work that you're doing, all of the, that, that longing, dare I say, those, those spiritual tears that you have shed, that you can't go to Mass, can't receive Holy Communion as you used to do, that you can't go to Eucharistic Adoration, all of those are being invested. All of those are being gathered in the chalice, being brought to the altar by the Lord's holy angels. And indeed, that blood has been sprinkled on the hearts of the faithful that the church may be renewed. So at the end of this homily, let's, let's ask for that grace. Let's ask for that gift of the Holy Spirit. For each one of you at home, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, we ask that the Holy Spirit, the healer, will come down upon each one of you. That he will heal the wounds of your hearts. That he will heal your memories. That he will heal those experiences that have hurt you. That he will grant you the grace of true forgiveness. We pray that he will fill your heart with love. Love for those who do not love you. Love for those who are difficult. We pray that the Holy Spirit will fill you with joy. This confidence that no matter what happens, you are a beautiful and beloved son or daughter of the Most High God. And that Jesus has prepared a place for you in heaven. We pray that the Holy Spirit will fill you with his peace. We pray that in all the struggles of your family, due to wills, due to unforgiveness, jealousy, anger, that all of this will be healed and that true peace will reign in your heart. Lord, we pray for patience, We pray, Lord, that in the struggles, especially of our modern world, where God is being pushed out, where we're beginning to feel like a minority, where we're beginning to feel 
the glare of those who disagree with us. Lord, we pray that our hearts will be filled with patience, that this fruit of the Holy Spirit's patience may be made manifest in our lives too. Lord, we pray for the fruit of kindness. Lord, that in adversity we may respond with kindness towards those who disagree. Lord, we pray for the fruit of goodness to be made manifest in our lives. Lord, that people will see our actions, that they will see our lives, and that they will see there's something different about them. There's something better about the way they live. There's something more wholesome about their family. Lord, that our goodness might shine through, that your goodness in us might be visible. Lord Jesus, may we trust you. May your spirit, may the fruit of trustfulness be alive and active in our hearts and lives. When things seem to go against us, Lord, may we trust in you with all of our hearts. Lord, may we always be gentle. And may we live lives full of self-control in a world that tells us, do whatever you want and that's what will make you happy. Lord Jesus, we pray for your Holy Spirit to come down upon each one of us in a powerful way. Lord, may it renew every aspect of our lives, not just our lives on a Sunday morning, but every daily decision, every daily relationship, every daily phone call, every daily post on the internet or on social media. May it motivate what we look at, what we say. Lord Jesus, may your Holy Spirit renew our hearts and renew the face of the earth. And so we pray together. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through Christ our Lord. Amen.